My name is Ellen. I have two daughters, Isabella, who is almost 20, and Gabriella, who went to live with the Lord. Um, she passed away in 2019 at eight years old. So in 2013, I came down here on a business trip, and I was staying with my cousin who lives here, and the night before, he said, we're going to church, be ready at 10, or whatever time it was. And I was like, I'm not going to church on vacation. And my cousin wasn't a church goer, so I was like, what are you even talking about? And he's like, we're going to church. You're here, you're going to church. I was like, all right. And so I reluctantly was like, got ready for church the next morning. And I walked in and like everybody says, you know, there's the rock band and donuts and coffee. And so right away I was like, all right, this isn't so bad. I could drink coffee while being in church. I'll, I'll stay. I remember sitting there and my eyes started burning with tears. And I was like embarrassed. I didn't want anybody to see that I was crying. And anybody who knows me knows I wanted to live in Florida since the first time I ever came here in 2007. But I wanted to live here for the palm trees and the nice weather. But when I heard that message, it was like God himself was saying, this is where you need to be for your life to change. In 2010, my entire life turned upside down. Um, I had... Uh, I had my younger daughter, and the very next day, one of my best friends passed away of cancer, which was very difficult. And three months later, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So here I had a seven-year-old, a newborn. My dad was diagnosed with cancer. Seven months later, he passed away. Five months after that, my daughter was diagnosed with a disability. I mean, it was like a brick wall hit me. I was knocked out. and. My dad, who was my best friend, and the person I would go to all the time, was no longer there. And that next two years was just, I mean, it was, it was torture. It was, I had to stop working to be home with my daughter. It was therapies after therapies, and I wound up being broke because I wasn't working anymore. Um, we were on public assistance. It was the type of situation where just getting out of bed every single morning was, almost impossible. Every time I started to feel like I was getting back on my feet, I kept getting knocked down. And then I moved to Florida. <laughs> and, and that's when I started coming to Kensington. So when I finally crossed that faith line is when I finally surrounded myself every single day on a daily basis with really, really strong faith-based people because until I had that in my daily life every day, going to groups, being surrounded by it, having people I could call and lean on, that was the only thing that really finally made me see that without God, everything falls apart. I moved here August of 2016 and I started in a small group. It just was exactly what I needed for that moment in time. And I stayed with that women's group for probably the first two years. And in that group, I met Casey, who was just an amazing woman, who became a guide for me, um, like a second mom to me. And after about two years, they, her and her husband invited me and my daughters to move in with them. You know, financially, we were struggling, and we moved in with them, and their presence just changed my life. I couldn't even believe that people could be that kind. And that's what I found in Kensington. In 2019, when my daughter passed away, my older daughter was at such a great place with her faith. Like she was in her youth groups and she was surrounding herself with the right people. And she was just at such a good place with her faith. And the night my daughter passed away, it was shocking and unexpected and I remember all I kept saying over and over in the midst of paramedics in the house and firefighters and cops and everybody, and it was chaos in the house. And I just kept saying to my daughter, no matter what happens tonight, no matter what the outcome, because we didn't know if Gabriella had passed yet, God is still good and we have to keep trusting him. And I remember just thinking to myself in that moment, like, how am I saying this? Like, I remember it, like, in my head going, like, I knew I meant it, but I just couldn't even believe I was saying the words. That night was the worst night of our lives, obviously. And the next morning, 
coming home without Gabriella and talking to Isabella and just seeing that she really believed that it was going to be okay and that as sad as we were, that God had a purpose for this and that God's hands were all over this and that it was going to be okay. And so that for me, as far as being spiritually defining, like that moment is what said to me, like, my faith is unshakable now because every other time in my life when I thought I had faith, the minute something went wrong, I got angry at God. I questioned God. I was mad at God. And that was the first time in my life that the worst possible thing a mother could go through happened. And I wasn't angry at God. And I knew in that moment, my relationship was finally solid with God. I want so badly for everyone to see Kensington for what it is. Like, I know what it did for me, and I want so badly to reach so many people. I mean, if I could have a bullhorn and go around, like, everywhere in Winter Garden and be like, come to this church, it's the best, um, I would do that. When I think about everything that God's going to do through this initiative, I just truly feel that it's going to be a game changer.